Hello everyone. Today is 8th of September. This is another round of community office hours for Parka. Uh, Parka code of conduct applies, but gist of it, please be nice to each other. We will have nice updates about Parka today. Uh, Tor and Matthias is here to give us some updates on recent changes on Parka server. So who wants to go first? Uh, mine will be short, so I can go first. Please. Um, so previously in Parka's FrostDB, we were sizing our granules based on the number of rows in each granule. And then once it exceeded the number of rows, we'd split the granule in half. And then when those would then exceed the number of rows, we'd split those in half. The default was 8K rows. Um, so every 8K rows was written, you'd have a split. Um, there's been some complaints or some issues filed around uh, the memory usage of Parka, which has been fairly extreme with default settings and having it scrape itself. It used something like 10 gigabytes to track 512 megabytes of Parka data. Um, so that's not great. Um, after digging into it, uh, we discovered that it's the overhead of holding that many Parquet files in memory. Um, and because we would split these granules at 8,000 rows, um, we'd open thousands of uh, Parquet files. So we made a change in FrostDB to instead split by uh, rows to instead split by the actual granule size according to the Parquet files in the granule. Um, and then the secondary change along that is um, instead of just always splitting the granule into two, it will first compact the granule into a single parquet file. And then if that parquet file still exceeds the size setting, um, then it'll split it into two smaller parquet files and go from there. Um, with that, we saw instead of using about 10 gigs, it drops to under two gigs to track 512 megs of data. Um, so there's still probably some room for improvement, but at the very least, it's a huge order of magnitude difference, um, which is great. Um, the change in Parka itself is the flag storage granule size is no longer in number of rows. It's now a number of bytes. Um, so the default, I think, is 25 megs or something. I can't remember what I said it to. But um, yeah, that flag has been changed. So that's all for my update. Mm, quick question, if I may. Um, well, great. Thanks for working on that uh, tour first thing. Uh, noticed the memory usage was high, but was a few months ago, even before uh, FrostDB was introduced. But yeah, quite exciting to know that it's improving. Uh, quick newbie question, what's a granule? <laughs> yeah, a granule is a concept in, um, in FrostDB itself. Um, basically, a granule is just a grouping of parquet files that have been written. So every time you you issue a write to the FrostDB instance, um, it transforms that buffer you give it into a parquet file, which compacts all of uh, the data in there into the little parquet file, and then it adds it to a granule. So a granule is literally just a list of parquet files that have been written. Um, and then we order these granules in a B tree. And so, when you write, it's basically it sorts all the data you write into the granules into the specific parquet files. Okay, thanks for the explanation. Yeah. Cool. I have already added the links to the related parka issues and FrostDB PR. So if you want to see the actual changes or their nice benchmarks and some graphs so that you can visualize the changes. So check them out. Any other questions? Cool. Matthias, do you want to take over for the query concurrent query plan execution? Woohoo. Yes. Um, so I think, oh, where do I even start? Um, in the last couple of months, we had a fantastic pull request opened uh, on FrostDB by Albert, who was sometimes in this call, as at least not here today. Um, but yeah, he basically started uh, hacking on uh, making queries that come into uh, Parka or just 
FrostDB, um, doesn't need to be Parker, uh, be executed in parallel. So um, he did an amazing job and worked on, on all of these things. And um, we, we kind of wanted something more predictable. So the way that he constructed it uh, was totally fine and, and working. Um, however, kind of the, the one thing where we wanted to still um, slightly improve things um, was we wanted things to be, again, like predictable in a way that we can create a concurrent um, query plan up front that then only gets executed basically. And he like spawned go routines um, kind of during the planning, et cetera. And we don't do that anymore. So that's the major difference, but um, yeah, more of an implementation detail. And I completely, yeah, there we go. Um, so what, what does it mean uh, in the end, right? So right now, if you, if you look at this query, and I think this is like forgetting the, um, this is forgetting the the profile types in Parka in this in this um, drop down. Basically, this this drop down here. Um, we need to run this this query. And what so far happened was that the table scan would be executed. It would read the read the raw data, and then it would kind of like hand it off um, uh, to the projection, and then the projection uh, hands it off to the distinction, and then. Um, basically uh, after that already to the app. That's kind of missing here. So it was just like this one, ignore the three other um, rows down here. It was just one uh, synchronous kind of flow through the entire application. But we can we can do something where we, where we take the table scan and we can read multiple buffers, for example, multiple parquet files um, that are on disk or in memory that uh, kind of Thor just touched on uh, during ingestion. We can now read them back, but we can do that concurrently. So we can open multiple files and we can read them back um, and, and then stream the underlying um, data into the projections concurrently. So basically what that means is that we want to uh, open four table scans, for example, and then the data should flow, as you can see, into the projection, into the distinction. And then there are some operations um, that need to be basically synchronized. So imagine you have like a uh, label um, job equals Prometheus here. And then uh, down here, you have uh, job equals uh, Thanos. And then another one, um, job equals uh, Thanos. And another one where it says actually job equals Parker. Right. So if we were to, to send those to, um, to the app right now, we would basically see one of them in random order or whatever. And we we do want to synchronize them so the app doesn't get concurrent um, um, callbacks. And then uh, also we want to basically make sure that um, if we run the distinction, we want to only return Prometheus, Thanos, Thanos uh, once, and then Parker, right? And these two, they, they don't know that they, both have the same label here right now. So we need to synchronize them and then do a final round of kind of the distinct operator so that we only end up with like the three labels that we actually have uh, as a distinct column. Um, and the way this is now constructed is that um, we, um, let's put the app back, um, that we in, and this was just merged by, <laughs> by me right before this meeting, so let me, let me open this up. Um, uh, share this tab instead. Um, da, 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 da. It's very low level, um, so feel free to ask questions if this is a bit too fast, etc. But before we had like a physical plan, so just a single physical plan where they were basically callbacks stacked into each other that would then call the next callback, kind of like if you're familiar with HTTP middlewares, I actually started thinking uh, of those callbacks, uh, kind of like HTTP middlewares, where we would then um, pass on the, the request, or in this case, the data to the next middleware callback operator. Um, and now we have like multiple physical plans, like an array of physical plans, and those are the, the different. So in this case, um, we would have four physical plans in that array, and then the first array 
uh, the first physical plan always calls the next um, physical plans um, callback, and and those are always in sync. So the the third one always calls the third uh, projection, kind of uh, making sure that things are uh, properly uh, aligned. There is no like cross crisscrossing. Um, but yeah, what what this basically allows us to do is uh, in a in another change that I'm currently working on. Um, and that I'm going to post uh, on FrostDB in, in just a bit um, is that once we actually start querying data in 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 in, Par uh, in Parker, we know. I mean, everything works just like before, and we can merge, etc. Um, but if we go into Jaeger um, and look, for example, at the uh, where is profile types? Profile types request. Um, and we see this one. We can see that now we're collecting um, in the table iterator, we are collecting row groups, which is like another kind of like basically parts of the parquet files. And then we instantly start streaming them into the distinction callback, for example. And those didn't happen. Uh, concurrently or in parallel in this case, even before, um, but now they do, and we can do all of that um, um, a bit more uh, efficiently, or not efficiently, but uh, concurrently and thus faster in the end. And this becomes especially um, interesting once you have query merge. Okay, I don't know why this show up. Query, yes. So I just clicked on on the merge button here, and that basically takes many profiles and combines them into into a single profile, and that is kind of where most uh, operations are usually happening. We need to read all the data in that time frame for the profiles that are matching the labels we are selecting, and now you can see again, um, I have twenty four cores in this machine, um, so all of these um, are run in in parallel, and then we're handing them off. And there are some <laughs> there are some callbacks in here in between um, that I just didn't instrument right now. But um, again, once the distinction has happened, we pass them on, and you can see the aggregations as well. They happen in parallel, and then kind of funny to see um, once all of these have happened somewhat in parallel or concurrently, um, the last finishing one um, is this one, and then that already gets like pre-aggregated data, just does a final aggregation step of the pre-aggregated data and then hands it off to to construct the profiles um, that you see in in the um, in the final output in the in the UI. So this is kind of like the interesting thing interesting part where now we can do these uh, aggregations and we can basically fan out and we can imagine like take one profile, merge it, another profile merge it and do that in parallel and then only at the end kind of like combine those already merged profiles uh, for a final final profile um and yeah i i hope that um overall um this is going to increase especially uh, increase or increase the speed of reading things and especially once you get above like 15 minutes 20 minutes or even an hour or a day or whatever. So we'll, we'll do benchmarks around all of this. Um, and there are benchmarks I'm running locally right now. Sadly, um, they aren't really <laughs> telling me much, or that's why I'm, I'm not able to show them. Like one, one benchmark says, now it's taking two milliseconds instead of three milliseconds. So I need to generate proper data. And then I think the, um, the benchmarks will be a, a bit more interesting and we'll share them with the community in the pull request with the final with the final um, PR to introduce concurrent query plannings in Parka or FrostDB to be more specific. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Any questions? And again, like I think a lot of the ideas came from Albert. Just want to highlight that he did an amazing job in the PR, and we just refined them. And kind of like again, we are laying out this like deterministic 
physical query plan now that we know how it's going to look like and we can kind of like even print this uh, going forward that will be another PR and then um, we can we can tell pretty exactly what is going to be executed and that was like the the biggest difference to what he did but his PR would have would have worked just just as well I guess So let's, yeah, this, this is pretty fast now. <laughs> but yeah, certainly don't have numbers yet to prove how fast it just is compared to before. Thanks a lot for great explanation and visualizations. I like really helps me to understand what's going on. <laughs> yeah, like I think we, we should post, post these and in the query uh, subfolder or somewhere in FrostDB, I think that would make sense. Put them in the readme on how, how the query planner works um, so that it's like nicely uh, documented and people can start learning uh, or, or about this and even start contributing. And lots of thanks to Alfonso, uh, who like started at Polar Signals a month ago, but he's already been such a big help and like has contributed a bunch of really cool PRs around this area as well. So I think querying data from Parker will just get get better and better in the next months. Are there any other questions? Anyone has any other topic to discuss? The board is open. If you have already, haven't already put anything to agenda, you can discuss them right now. No questions? Nothing? All right. Then this week, it's going to be a short one. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's perfectly fine. OK, everybody. Uh, so see you in an, another office hours in two weeks, I guess. Until then, see you on GitHub or Discord. Perfect. Thanks, Kamai. See you, everybody. Bye, all. Bye. Thanks. Ciao.